Hello parents, welcome to week one, day two of remote learning. Uh, I'm Miss Gerber, I'll be your host through the slideshow today. Uh, we as teachers are really interested in your feedback on how your early days have been going. As we've mentioned before, this packet was designed by the district and is what's going out to all students and all schools, but we will be designing the next packet that's coming out so your feedback will help us to determine what is helpful to contain in that work. Uh, we'll start things today with a morning message. Students in my class know this format. Students in Ms. Sullivan's and Mrs. Lopez's classes are familiar with having a morning message. So you can read this with your student or have them read it to you. You can read it together and I hope you enjoy. On the other side of the screen, I just wanted to remind you that today is our last day of open office hours all day. Reach out to us, uh, any of us, between 7.30 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. with any questions. You can ask us for a phone call. You can ask us for a Zoom. You can just text us. Please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Beginning Monday, we'll have the individual conferences, and those are what you should be signing up for on that Sign Up Genius form from your teacher. I will be enclosing links to those forms in the comment section below this video. So if you didn't get a chance to sign up yet, please click there and do so. Here we have just a little bit. You guys sent us so many great photos. We're going to try and spotlight just a few each day. But here we have Ryder P. from Mrs. Lopez's class doing some art and practicing writing his name. We have Colton from Miss Sullivan's class. It looks like he's doing some math and it looks like he's using some candy to do it. Lucky him. And we have Michaela from my class. She wrote a how-to book and she actually sent me a video of her reading it. We love to get pictures and videos from you, so please don't hesitate to send us these things. We love to see them, and if you don't want them featured in the slideshow, that's okay. Just let us know, please. I also included a photo of some kids' work and also of one student's home learning setup box. If you want to send us those things as well, just let us know how you're doing school in this very different time. Today, the suggested times are 45 minutes of reading, 45 minutes of math, 20 to 40 minutes of writing, 30 minutes of brain breaks and activities from the activity bingo that comes later in the slides, and 40 minutes of extra things, science and art, things like that. We just want to remind you that these time suggestions are something to work up to. In kindergarten, in our classroom, we do things in 10 to 15 minute chunks. We do not sit anywhere for 45 minutes at a time. And something that we strongly suggest is doing one small chunk of direct instruction working with you and then at least one chunk of independent practice or independent activities. And so I'll be including some suggestions for independent activities that can go with your lessons. This is a suggested sample daily schedule that you might want to try. Setting a routine will be really helpful to keep your student focused and productive, especially if you're able to visually write it somewhere and check things off as you accomplish them. That is a really simple little trick that helps keep kids focused and motivated. As a kinder team, we are going to be working towards producing further YouTube content with things such as science experiments, read-alouds, and art projects that can be used as interactive learning experiences and that we'll be adding to this channel. In addition to the learning kit, here's a list of supplies that you'll need for today. If you are running out of any of these supplies um, or supplemental resources, or you need access to any sort of school supplies, including internet, uh, please let us know via text during your conference or reach out directly to the office. We still have fan services going and these are exactly the kinds of things they can provide. Scissors, glue, and additionally internet if that's something that you need. Great, and that takes us to the reading portion of today's uh, 
today's work. Remember that this is the overview slide and then there will be further digital resources on the next slides that we show. And also when they say learning kit, they mean that packet. So some of these activities are the same as yesterday and so we suggest chunking your time for this reading block. Maybe review the activity that you did yesterday and then add one or two more new activities. And you can also add in some independent practice in the form of independent reading time. Even if students feel like they can't read the words, they can read the pictures and come up with a summary of what they think happened and give it to you. You can also have students do a sight word hunt in books. So give them a piece of paper and they can record all the sight words that they find in a longer book. And you can have students use clay or play-doh to make letters Either you give them clues for what letters to make or they can spell words that they see around the house or you can focus on the letter U. So this is the first sight word of the week, F-O-R spells for. A link to this video and all subsequent videos will be in the comments below. It's really fun to use these songs for dance breaks and sing-alongs and parents have told me before that kids listen to them while they're in the bath, things like that. These are some nice independent activities for kids. Here's our other sight word of the day, H-A-V-E, have. You can have students rhyme words that rhyme with for and have as well as practicing how to spell them. Here's another song for the letter U. We use so many songs in our classroom, so it's really great to keep them going. We will work towards getting these slides aligned with the songs and rhymes that we have previously been using in our classroom. But for right now, these are all brand new, which is fun. This is a phoneme deletion video, which means it's practicing what we call chopping up words, changing out words, help students to uh, understand the different parts of a word. And so this will give you an idea of some fun games that you can play with your student and songs you guys can sing together. That brings us to our read aloud. Again, all of these links are in the comment section. I'm not gonna be clicking through. I'm just giving a brief overview. So the target skills that we're working on for reading this week are retelling and rereading to understand and comparing and contrasting how animals are the same and different. So just something to review with your student that compare and contrast means to decide how things are the same and how they are different. We usually use all of those vocabulary terms with students in the classroom. Here is the math overview. So again, this is a list of everything that you could do today, but I suggest picking just a few things and splitting it up between what's you instructing them and what's them doing some independent practice and alternating those activities. Even if the independent practice just means listening to a song and singing along, that still counts. And just a further reminder, when it says C learning kit, that means the packet that you picked up at school. So we are focusing on the skills of counting to 100 by ones and also identifying and describing two-dimensional shapes. As a reminder, two-dimensional shapes are flat shapes, three-dimensional shapes are solid shapes. And it's asking about the sides and the corner. So the side is the smooth part and the corner is the pointy part where two sides come together. We in, have some independent practice that you can do with your student, as well as these coming up videos that they can sing along with. <laughs> Whew, it is hard to talk for this long uninterrupted. I'm sure you guys don't remember what it feels like to not be interrupted. You can have students do a two-dimensional shapes hunt around the house. So just find objects that are two-dimensional. And then once they find those objects, you can have them sort those objects by what shape they are or by other criteria, like how many sides they have. You can have 
students work with their siblings to make some of these shapes by lying on the ground and positioning their bodies. And you can pull out the Play-Doh again and have students use clay or Play-Doh to make these shapes. If you don't have any Play-Doh at home right now, I suggest checking out the Lapine Elementary School Facebook page. Mrs. Lopez posted a video about how you can make your own Play-Doh at home. Here is a fun counting video. These videos are the same as yesterday. We're trying to keep things similar so students can get in a routine, but we will be changing things up and posting other songs with other content. Uh, here's a shapes and sorting song that can go with their sorting game. And this is a fun independent uh, video that they can watch and they can name the shapes that they see. This video here, same and different, can go with your compare and contrast discussion uh, from your reading and it also has to do with the shapes and your comparing and contrasting them as you sort them. Moving on to writing. A lot of students this year really love writing. We are working on informational writing, specifically how-to writing. So you did some brainstorming yesterday about things your child knows about. And this is just a reminder that informational writing needs to be something that you have really done in your real life and not just something that you really want to do. And you're going to take that thing that you really know how to do and you're going to start adding sentences and labels. Remember that a label goes on the picture and it gives more information because sometimes pictures can be a little bit unclear. So make sure your student is adding plenty of detail to their picture so that they have a lot of labeling that they can do. This is a reminder students at this age are working to remember the difference between a letter, a word, and a sentence. So this can help them with that. When we say 30 minutes of brain break or activity bingo, we, first of all, assume that you're probably doing more than that um, because you should be taking a brain break, not just every time you suspect that your student needs it, but take a brain break for you. Personally, nothing puts me in a better mood with the class um, when we're, we've just been kind of like pushing ourselves through a lot of hard work than just taking a quick dance break or something like that. It cheers us all up and gets us ready to get focused again. I would suggest if you do uh, a go noodle or if you do a more active brain break, making sure to do a breath, a calming breath or mindful moment or a balancing pose, something of that nature after your more active brain break. That helps signal the body and the brain that it's time to focus again and get started on the academic work. A brain break can also be something as simple as making lunch together, changing your location, standing up and shaking out your legs and your arms. It doesn't have to be something structured, but it can be. We have been talking in kindergarten about the four seasons and we'll include a song about that in upcoming slides, but it's a good time to talk with your student. Um, I'm recording this on Thursday and it's currently snowing outside, but hopefully tomorrow, Friday in the future, it's a little bit warmer and you guys can go outside. I suggest having your student and you as well, if you can, sit still in one spot and just observe everything you can with your senses. Then you can come in and make a web like the one pictured here of what you observed. Just write or draw pictures of what you saw, what you smelled, what you heard, what you touched. In our classroom, we say that even though there are five senses, we do not use the sense of taste while we're at school. So it's up to you if you want to use the sense of taste while you're at home. Enjoy this uh, senses song. The link to it is down below in the comments, as well as this season song. This is a really fun video. Um, students at this age really love to hear, ha learn how to draw new things, and especially with it being spring, it's fun to draw a little baby bird. If you do this project, please send us pictures. We would love to put it in our slideshow for Monday or next, sometime next week. Another fun idea is to make a grocery store. Just so you know, students in kindergarten have studied pennies, nickels, and dimes. 
but they haven't really studied quarters or dollars. So it's up to you if you want to go up to those increments or if you want to keep everything worth pennies, nickels, and dimes. It's a great time to practice counting by ones, fives, and tens, and you can give your student a budget or you can let them make their own prices. They don't really know how to write the cents or the dollar signs. They just know how to write the numbers. And here's a little video of how that can look. Once again, I'm gonna remind you, just like Mrs. Lopez did yesterday, please celebrate your work. We as a team are celebrating the fact that making our YouTube videos took only three quarters as long as it did yesterday. We're all learning new skills and we're all doing wildly different things than we used to do and we all have multiple demands on us. You are not responsible for being a teacher. You are a learning partner and we're your partners in this too. So please, please, please lean on us and just reach out to your teacher. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you need. Tell us if what we suggest is helpful because we obviously don't know how to do this and so we rely on your feedback. So uh, as Mrs. Lopez said, we use the word yet to remind us that it's really powerful and we are all doing our best. So when you're thinking to yourself, I just can't put captions on this video, you just remind yourself, I can't do it yet. And you will have another chance with tomorrow's video. Please send us, you know, send us pictures of things that don't go well too. We'd love to spotlight mistakes that happen, you know, because that's part of learning too and it makes everyone feel better to see successes and things they need to try again. So please enjoy this song about the power of yet and again the link is in the caption below and congratulations, you made it through the first week. Look forward to working with you starting again next week.